Hello everyone, it's Keisha. Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I print on tissue paper. This is the regular gift wrap paper and don't worry if it has creases in it. And this is white. You want white. The other thing I use is freezer paper. Most people will get this in a grocery store so you should not have any problem finding this. It is 18 inches wide by 50 feet long. Now to cut off, you cut off 11 inches this way. So let's do that. I'll turn this around. Sorry about the noise and everything. And now I need eight and a half. Now it has a dull side and a shiny side, and the shiny side can be ironed to fabric and paper. Because this is a new piece of freezer paper, I will iron this to fabric first so that most of the stickiness is off. If I would iron this to tissue paper right away, I would not be able to get it off in one piece. So we want most of the stickiness off and I'm going to iron this to a piece of fabric first. Okay, I moved you to my ironing board and the camera has a hard time finding all this white here so it might go in and out of focus for a bit here. Here's my freezer paper and here's my fabric. So I'm going to iron this on my fabric. I have it on high heat and no steam. And the second piece here, I'm going to give this a good press because I do want a lot of the adhesive removed from the piece of paper. As you can see, most of the shine is off. And you know what? I'm going to give this another go. Okay, much better. You saw how easy this came off of the fabric. This will not how easy it will be to take it off the tissue paper. Let me grab my tissue paper and I'll be back. So here are my two pieces of tissue paper. This is regular gift wrap tissue paper and I've cut them bigger than my freezer paper. This way, you know, you can, doesn't matter how wrinkly it is, all the wrinkles will come out. This is a part of the back of paper napkins. I'm sure this will also work. Although this seems a bit denser. So now I grab my freezer paper. If I iron my freezer paper this way to the tissue paper, that's it, no more. I don't know if you can see it, but it has like still, it get wrinkles in it. Now if I grab my other piece of tissue paper and I slide the freezer paper under there, it will be smoother. This way, also because I cut it bigger, if you get your iron on the freezer paper's shiny side, you will get muck on your iron. You just want to press it enough so that it is adhered and not more because then otherwise you're not going to get it off. Now I will cut this to size. Here you see that it didn't caught you do want it you do want your tissue paper to be ironed totally to your freezer paper because sometimes the printer will grab this and muck it up so you do want it to be adhered now we'll trim the pieces but I'll wait for this to cool off that way it I'm sure that the tissue paper will stay on the freezer paper otherwise it might come off because it is warm and then it will still peel off easy so I'll be back in a minute now before I trim this, I will mark the back of the freezer paper 
so that I know what is the freezer paper and what is the tissue paper because sometimes you hardly can tell what is what. Just a quick word here about when your tissue paper has not adhered completely to your freezer paper when you bring it to your through your printer. Even though my paper went through it this way, the tissue paper is loose and your printer will muck it up a bit. Here you can see that this whole corner was loose and I have a whole black spot here with ink that it got, I don't know what it does in a printer, but it it's not good. Here too, it's loose a little bit and then it accumulates more ink. So have it ironed properly and make sure that the edges are all adhered. So now your tissue paper is ready for printing and don't mind the little wrinkles that are still in there. You're not going to find them back. If you have your own photos and you want to print your own photos, that is great. But not everybody has nice pictures or in this instance, I wanted silhouettes of um, fashion ladies. So I went online and looked for free images of fashion silhouettes and websites will come up with images on it and make sure that they're copyright free. I found pixabay.com and there's a lot of images on there that you can use for your personal use. So that's a good source to get your free images. I then bring the images to a Word document. That way I know the size it's going to print out because the Word document prints in 8.5 by 11 or an A4. And in the Word document, I can scale the images larger and smaller. Here, for example, I have this image of a bird. So I put my Word document in landscape mode, copy and paste the image in, make sure it's big enough so that it can fit the page. Or if I want it smaller, I can put my document in portrait mode and then I can fit two of the same images on one page and then print them out. This way you can see it better. Now the other neat thing about printing your own images on tissue paper is if you don't have paper napkins. This is a piece of paper that I've ironed a paper, paper napkin on and then I made an envelope out of it. Not everybody has nice paper napkins, so this is a great substitute for that. Now I will show you how to take it off and you'd have to be very careful and go slow. As soon as you find resistance somewhere, try and go around it. Say, say if I find resistance here, I would try and go around and come back from another side. This is definitely one of the papers that has been used more than once. So yeah, I feel resistance here, so now I'm going the other way around. Careful, careful. Now, Misty, what are you doing here? My cat came to visit. I don't think we're going to do that. Hey, no, we're not going to do that. No. It's very nice you want to be here, but I will move you. All right, continue. There we go. This was actually quite easy. And for the first time, I will suggest you iron the freezer paper to fabric twice. So once you've removed the tissue paper from the freezer paper, don't throw this away. You, you can at least use this one or two more times or maybe three more times after that. Or maybe even longer, I haven't tested it yet. 
And the other thing we should do now is iron the tissue paper. I have an inkjet printer and inkjet printed images might smear when wet. So I can now go, this, go to the iron and heat set this with my iron on hot. That way it prevents bleeding when I want to apply this to a collage and you know, using glue it might smear and everything. So it will prevent smearing. I have done a test, it does work. Or maybe I shall do a test. I shall do a test. Okay, I'm gonna do a demonstration. I've ironed this and I have not ironed this. So I'll apply this to my collage over here and then also you can see how the white from the tissue disappears. And I'm gonna, oh, I should have gotten a different. I'm gonna apply some glue. Put my lady on. And you gotta go over the lady. Well, there you go. See how the black is nice and black? It didn't smear at all. Now see if I can find an area where we can see if it smears or not. How about over here? Okay. You can see the glue becoming green here. See that? This here is all, it's not light anymore. So it will run. Don't put this in my glue anymore. See how the glue is all green and it didn't affect over here at all. It's all white over here. So yeah. Heat setting with an iron is definitely recommended. And then you can use it as a paper napkin if you want. So that's how I go about it. I hope this was useful for you and that you can use this in your own way. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Until the next one, bye.